I request everyone to sit and keep your mobile in silent mode, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon again. We are here today to pay homage to our beloved ex-president, Sanjay Shen, by organizing Sanjay Shen Memorial Lecture and giving award to the students of different institutes of our country for their outstanding performances. Sanjay Shen was president of our association for more than three decades and has immense contributions for the growth of our association and for the industry as a whole. He was one of the eminent industrialists of our country during that period. We organize this event every year to acknowledge his contributions for this association. Before we start the event, I request our President Mr. Arnab Jha to garland the portrait of Sanjay Shan. May I request our Honourable Speaker, Mr. Sip Kumar, to garland the portrait, please. Today we are fortunate that we have Mrs. Shen, like every year, and also one family member of Mrs. Shen is here, Mrs. Rukshana, Rukshan Bosch, I think, if I am not wrong. So I request you to garland the portrait, please. Our senior members are present here. I request Mr. Shapon Kumar Vasu, Shaponda, Mr. Ashim Mitro, and Provid Darkupto to Galen, please. Now I request Dr. Sanjay Chakraborty on behalf of College of Government College of Engineering and Air Technology. I request Mr. B. C. Jana on behalf of Central Leather Research Institute. Mr. Ramesh Shahu on behalf of FBDI. Today's award winner, we have only one recipient is present today, Miss Himadri Tiwari. Can you please come over and garland the portrait? On behalf of industry, I request Mr. Dadla.
Now may I request our honorable speaker to come on the dais please. And Mr. Arnav Jha, President of ILT. I request our Vice President Mr. Rashid Kanango to honor our honorable speaker with flower bouquet and the shawl. Let me request our President, Mr. Arnav Jha, to deliver a welcome address. Good afternoon, respected Mr. Shiva Kumar, Vice President, NAAP ID, Mumbai, Mr. Sushant Mullik, General Secretary, ILTA, the Executive Committee of ILTA, members, colleagues, friends, representatives, students, and ladies and gentlemen, I, on behalf of the Executive Committee member of IITA, <laughs> hereby welcome you all to participate in the 22nd Sanjay Sen Memorial Lecture, celebrating his birthday today as 14 January was a Sunday this year. On this day, we also arrange for felicitation of toppers of the Institute of leather science and technology, photo technology from different institutes at different levels. This year, this memorial lecture will be delivered by Mr. Shiva Kumar, Mumbai in Science City, Kolkata, in its seminar hall. As the born leader, Mr. Sanjay Sen took birth in 14th January 1926. His leadership was widespread and unsurmountable. He was an entrepreneur, technocrat, industrialist with special emphasis on foreign exchange earning. His leadership in Confederation of Engineering Industry as President, Engineering Export Promotion Council as Vice Chairman, Indian Chamber of Commerce as President, Member of Board of Trade he is still remembered. His appointment in Export Credit and Guarantee Corporation, Trade Development Authority, India Tourism Development Corporation, Indian Institute of Foreign Trade, Bureau of Indian Standard, and Federation of Indian Exports is of tremendous importance. As an industrialist, Mr. Singh was Chairman of National Trend in Company Limited, then the biggest tannery in Eastern India, Director of Singh Valley Limited, Chairman, Sen and Pandit Industries Limited, Director, Noakali Machine Tools Limited, and attached to more number of organizations as director. He gave various input in education and of science and technology too. He was Chairman of JB NSTS, Jagadish Bosch National Science Center Search. Chairman of the governing body of Government College of Engineering and Technology. Chairman Research Council of Central Leather Institute, Madras, executive member of IOLTCS in 1884 and also acted as group correspondent for leather and leather products. He was the chairman of the third consultation of leather and leather products industry in Unidio in 1984 and has acted as expert and consultant for leather and <coughs> leather products of Unidio Vienna. The title of today's memorial lecture is India, in Indian International Trade and Real or Trade, Real Trends and Possible Solutions. Sorry for interrupting. India is earmarked as the world's largest, fastest growing large economy as well as the world's largest exports and tenth biggest, largest bigger. Ex importer of commercial service. 
as overview in 2021 india was number 5 economy in the world in terms of gdp and many other factors are to be analyzed like impact of covid etc before giving any one simplified conclusion i did had very wisely arranged for a lecture on this contemporary subject and i think we shall enjoy it very much i express my gratitude to mr shivakumar for giving consent to deliver and deliver the lecture today and spare his valuable time for us with this i think thank you all and all of you thank you mr jha as i mentioned that we acknowledge the outstanding performance of the students in graduation in laser science and technology from different institutes other than government college of engineering and laser technology and uh, and university because these two medals we always give on our foundation day so other universities uh, we have two recipients one is miss himadri tiwari winner of sanjeshan memorial award for securing first class first in btech laser technology from mujafferpur institute of technology bihar in 2023 i request miss tiwari to come on the dais and i request our honorable speaker mr shiva kumar to hand over the medal to her Next award winner is Miss Anushka Pal, winner of Sanjeevan Memorial Award for securing first class first in B.Tech in Leather Technology exam from Hartcourt Butler Technological University, Kanpur, UP, in 2023. But uh, as he is out of uh, station and could not participate in this program, we will send the medal and the certificate by courier. there is another award which is mainly sponsored by mr chandan basu for the first class first uh, in btech in government college of engineering and electrical technology and some scholarships in his father's name to announce the name i will i will request our principal of government college of engineering and electrical technology dr sanjay chakravarti to come the topper uh, in btech from moulana abul kalam azad university of technology kolkata in 2022 miss ayugma shan gupto uh, in fact she called me last night and uh, uh, said that she is out of station and requested me to uh, send the same to her home address if possible otherwise she will collect it from the institute or from ilt office uh and uh, in fact she is the award winner in the name of honorable sanjay shen it is the sanjay shen memorial gold medal uh in fact uh, these this is ultimately endowed by our Uh, the industrialist mr chandan basu and the other three scholarship uh, award uh, the scholarship winners are sriporna sadhuka shoikat maji and sunita mondal sriporna sadhuka in fact she is now settled in chennai for her service to a very uh, established footwear uh, business uh, section and mr shoikat maji uh, he may be here i don't know if shoikat maji is here yeah, please you come here please 
and and uh, yeah, receive your check. Where is the check? I request our president, Mr. Arnav Jha, to hand over the certificate and check, please. Uh, the other scholarship winner is Sunita Mondal. Sunita, please. I request our Honorable Speaker, Mr. Sivokumar, to hand over the cheque to the recipient, please. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chakravarti. I would now request Ms. Himatri Tiwari to give your short presentation. Are you ready? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for inviting me here and giving me this honor to get this award. Thank you, Ms. Madri. Now I request Dr. Sanjay Chakravarti to introduce our honorable speaker to the audience before we go for the main event of Memorial Lecture. In fact, I was given a very huge charge of uh, describing the high profile uh, speaker, a very senior business leader. Uh, uh, having five pages in the uh, in favoring his uh, highlighted profile. Mm. Uh, so, uh, in fact, we are very, uh, very glad and honored here to, fi to find him uh, on the stage for this Sanjayashan Memorial Lecture, please. Uh, he is an accomplished senior business leader with more than 27 years of industry experience in development, finance, business development, both in India and abroad. Uh, he has made presentations and participations in various fora in both our country and abroad on various topics on Indian economy, international trade, export credit, etc. He has his industry experience covers more than 27 years, where the major portion of his career he is spent in Export-Import Bank of India for uh, uh, around 22 years and six months. And the, the, uh, after that, he joined this National Bank for Financing Infrastructure and Development, NABFID. He is uh, very much settled in Mumbai uh, for uh, his industrial experience. Before his joining to Export Import Bank of India, he was earlier uh, in Clarion India Limited, and before that he was in Queen India Limited. He passed out in the year 1994, BTEC, from ACTEC, Chennai, and CLRI. Immediately after passing out, uh, he joined uh, Queen India Limited for two years. After that, he joined Clarion. Uh, there also, he was there for more than two years and six months. Next, he, is, he was actually engaged in uh, MBA. For, to pursue his MBA course. If we, if we look back, you will find that he passed out in the year 1994. Uh, he, in fact, he is the batchmate of the director CLRI, CSIR. And then he did his 
MBA from Varati Darshan Institute of Management, Varati Darshan uh, University, 2000. He is having a very consistent academic background, including both PG and UG courses, as well as during his school hours. So all along, uh, he maintains his consistency and he is very much in the ladder of uh, his business profile. And uh, I don't know, uh, he can best answer where he will be settled because still now he is uh, enjoying the ladder of uh, maintaining his uh, I mean, accomplished business leadership. Uh, I tried to short out these things, this portion from the five pages he has uh, actually um, uh, given to us. So um, my request to you please, if I miss something, please don't hesitate to iterate please. Okay. Thank you very much. A very good afternoon to everyone. In fact, in a few minutes, it will be a very good evening. Uh, no, the previous speaker said, no, he is happy that I'm here. In, in fact, I am very happy to be here. Uh, even though it's a very you know, a major festival for us, like Durga Puja is for Calcutta, Pongal is for uh, Chennai. So, uh, no, when, when ILTA called, uh, I thought it's a great opportunity to connect with leather. Uh, even though I did leather in 94, it's almost 20, you know, almost 30 years now. Even now, I'm in touch with leather industry, getting an opportunity to come back and speak to leather fraternity. It's of great prestige to me. And I'm delighted to deliver the memorial lecture in commemoration of uh, Sri Sanjay Sen. So when I was thinking of topics, I thought you know, many speakers would be talking about you know, leather and leather related. But I thought since my experience after leather industry has been in development finance, I can touch upon Indian economy, international economy and what could leather do you know, in that. So I have structured the presentation in terms of setting the context by giving about global economy. In global economy, touch upon uh, the GDP which is a major indicator for uh, economy and uh, the inflation uh, both uh, for the global then come to the trade talk about you know how various countries have been doing in terms of exports and imports what are the major categories of products being exported various categories of products being imported to get a broad idea of where the trade is moving then from the global scenario move to the Indian scenario uh, talk about you know India's international trade how it has been changing the basket of products and services has been changing over the period of say last uh, uh, no, uh, so many years. Then briefly touch upon the select export schemes in India. Then uh, uh, talk a few slides of leather industry and uh, the way forward. While I mentioned way forward uh, since you know, there are many veterans here, I don't want to deep dive into the possible solutions. I'll touch upon what are my personal thoughts. What could leather industry achieve? Uh, very, very brief. And then I'll be open up, being, uh, you know, open up for uh, questions and answers. To set the context uh, in terms of uh, global GDP, uh, see after COVID, uh, I think one of the speakers was mentioning about COVID, after COVID there was a great you know, uh, uh, decline in uh, GDP globally and uh, since 2022 there is a slight increase in global uh, GDP and uh, last year there were a lot of geopolitical uh, you know, uh, events starting from Ukraine war, then moved on to then I think now the recent activity in Red Sea. So these actually camouflaged the, the GDP growth and it slightly lowered uh, to 3 and uh, the next year projection is uh, you know, expected to be slightly lower than that. Besides the world GDP, I have categorized into you know, the advanced economies and ad emerging economic and development economies which we call EMDEs. In advanced economies, again we have categorized into three regions, the major being US, Euro area and Japan and EMDEs again there are four broad regions which is emerging and developing Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean, Middle East and Central Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. So if you look at advanced economies, since they are already mature and the base is very high, their growth usually be a little low. So if you look at advanced economies, uh, it was something like 2.6 which slowed down to 1.5 and it is expected to be 1.4 next year. Uh, US, in fact, in advanced economies, last year uh, no, was a major issue in terms of the high inflation. In fact, I remember no, when I was in the US uh, no, for about uh, 
six years from 2010 to 2016, the uh, no, the interest rates and inflation will be almost zero. Now it has increased significantly. In fact, sometime it was like six to seven, and interest rates have become five. So the very high inflation and which is affecting the growth. And uh, see the growth has now it's you know, between 2.6 last year reduced to 1.5 and it will be projected to 1.4 in terms of GDP and uh, within advanced economies US is doing relatively well uh, Europe has sort of some term of uh, no recession in fact what we call recession is if the two quarters if economy is not growing if it is you know, uh, uh, declining it is called technically a recession Europe was in the verge in fact sometime back and now also I think it may not be a great year next year for Europe Japan has been struggling for many years, you know, in terms of stagflation, etc. So we have a problem in uh, Japan. In terms of emerging economy, market and developing economies, uh, India is a rising star. In fact, uh, again, as one of the major speaker was uh, mentioning, uh, India is the fastest growing major economy. Uh, you know, one, uh, India is the largest democracy that I think everyone uh, knows. Uh, India also is the fastest growing major economy as of now. Uh, China was growing. Uh, it was growing consistently for uh, so many years, but uh, recently, especially last year, there are a lot of you know, the real estate issues, which has slowed down. In fact, next year, it is expected that it actually may contribute to the slowing down of the global uh, economy. So China is expected to you know, slow down next year. Uh, India is more or less, I think, you know, this year also there has been a slight revision upwards based on the three quarter performance. Reserve Bank has increased uh, you know, the performance for India for the full year and be expected to maintain uh, next year. Uh, I should actually caution when I will come to that slide I will mention while we are very happy in terms of uh, India's GDP there are other factors where we need to work which I will uh, touch upon. Uh, Latin America and Caribbean uh, in fact uh, many years back you know, what we call as Latin American and Caribbean were part of the you know, problem and now it is again becoming a part of the solution it is also growing and definitely Sub-Saharan Africa is also because of the base and a huge population and huge opportunity it is growing. Uh, Middle East and Central Asia uh, more or less I think you know if you look at uh, uh, better in terms of the emerging market and uh, developing economies. On the right hand side I have given the GDP of the large six economies. Uh, if you give a broad idea the global economy totals about 100 trillion dollars of which United States is about 25 you know, uh, trillion which is about almost 25 percent of the global economy is accounted by US. China was very low, but it has caught up very fast, uh, followed by uh, Germany, Japan and India. Uh, this is of 22 uh, figures. In fact, uh, this you know, I, I should mention, when we compare international data, it will be usually calendar year. So, but whereas in India, we talk about the financial year. So, this is uh, the calendar year 22 data, where India was 3.4. 23, we are expected to about uh, 3.7. And there were some discussions that India has already reached, you know, reached uh, 4 trillion. It will take some more time. But if you look at this, uh, these six economies, in fact, uh, sometime back India was seventh largest economy, slowly it moved to five. And uh, it is expected to easily move to third position in the next couple of years. Uh, so, which, which I mentioned, India targets to become US dollar five trillion economy by uh, 2025. Uh, because I think Japan and Germany are not growing as fast as they should grow. India will be growing, so it will uh, no, be behind United States, China, and uh, it will be India will be the third. This is what we call as nominal uh, GDP. In terms of purchasing power parity, so there is some concept in economy called uh, PPP. So in that India is already the third largest economy uh, in terms of purchasing power parity. If you look at India's contribution to global GDP, it is expected to increase from 3.4 in uh, 2022 to 3.6 in 2023. But again you should compare and contrast how big China has become and how big US is already. So there's a huge potential for India and there's a lot of you know, uh, positive factors for India to grow. In terms of average you know, uh, CPI inflation, again in inflation there are two things, consumer price inflation, wholesale uh, price uh, inflation, WPI and CPI. We normally focus on uh, 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 CPI which affects the uh, end customer like us. Uh, if you look at actually you know, the advanced economies, which is the, the, the bottom most curve, if you see it was almost it's around like no around 1 1.5 in fact it was much lower previously see it has increased to about 6.7 in 22 and that is where you know there was a lot of you know inflationary pressures and you know the advanced economies also had increased their rate to about you know uh, 6% 5 5.5 in advanced economies 
in fact you know uh, the what we call savings account uh, abroad is called checking account so even if you keep say ten thousand dollars a year at the end you will get only say like 10 cents as the total income for the entire year such low was the interest rate but it has significantly been increasing to uh, keep control of the inflation uh, if you look at you know the, the world as a whole which will be the aggregate of you no know, advanced economies and developed economies it was something like 3.6 it went up to 8.7 which is a blue color and uh, it is expected to taper down to 5.8 uh, next year now if you look at india if you see in uh, 2013 it was as high as about 10 percent was the inflation uh, and you know uh, 22 it increased to 8.7 where we had a severe uh, problem so in fact reserve bank of india the main mandate of reserve bank of india is to maintain the inflation what they call as band uh, they need to maintain the inflation between uh, 4 plus minus 2 so it can go up to uh, 6 and uh, be you know up to uh, 2 so 2 to 6 is the band but they expect to keep around 4 in fact, uh, in fact, inflation is not bad. We need a uh, minimum inflation for the economy to grow, but it should not be very high. If it is becoming very high, we will have a problem of growth. So in India, it was 8.7. Uh, the Reserve Bank has you know, nicely controlled and you know, it is you know, expected to come down to 4.6. Uh, so this is the other thing. So inflation is broadly under control, but uh, I think it will be uh, need to come down to around 4 when I think Reserve Bank will be relatively happy. Now, having set the context of global economy, both in terms of GDP as well as inflation, now let's go to global trade. Now, if you look at the trends uh, you know, in global trade, so as I said, the global economy is about $100 trillion broadly, where the US is about $25 trillion, about 25%. Global trade, if you look at from 2013 to say like uh, 2019, when the COVID hit, broadly it was hovering around you know, 18 to $20 trillion. So if you look at if export is 20 trillion dollars import also will be equally 20 trillion dollars about 40 trillion dollars in uh, 2020 which is a calendar year which i said you know, internationally so 2019 covid impacted in december but the real impact happened in 2020 it reduced to 17.5 uh, based on the base effect which is a low uh, no base of 17.5 next year 21 what a great growth in terms of uh, trade it went you know grew about 26.5 percent to 22 uh, 22.1 trillion us dollars and further grew to 24.6 uh, trillion dollars uh, no uh, last year it is expected to grow a uh, little more this year as well so more or less it was about you know 18 to 20 but last two years it has been increasing but the the issue especially for you know people in business in uh, you know uh, leather there's a huge shortage of trade finance for uh, international trade so in fact there was a study done by asian development bank where they said that the trade finance gap uh, was increased from 1.5 trillion to 1.7 trillion us dollars in terms of trade finance for international trade and which affects the smes now if you look at the major exported products by value this we had compared about last 10 years from 2013 to 2022 if you look at on the left hand side uh, but actually there is no major difference in terms of export products uh, you know, in 2013 and 2022, the major categories being uh, crude oil, refined petroleum, motor cars, gold, etc. If you look at the crude oil and refined petroleum, which is you know the crude and petrol, diesel, whatever you use, it has contributed about 13 percent. If you do, so in in the trade, almost 13 percent is based on this crude and refined crude, uh, refined uh, petroleum products. It has slightly reduced uh, from 13 to 9 and uh, given uh, no, our focus on uh, no, clean energy etc it is expected to go down further uh, it's, it's unfortunate that i think in this chart leather is not there so which we'll again uh, discuss uh, so from about 18.9 trillion it has moved to about 24.6 trillion dollars uh, uh, the concentration as is a concentration of top exported products uh, hs4 digit has reduced from 2013 to 22 uh, it is expected to further go down which I mentioned because of the clean energy and uh, more dependence on you know, uh, clean energy. Now if you look at top trading countries, they have remained largely the same. Uh, if you see uh, you know, the China and US, they, they actually may contribute a major share and there is no major change between uh, 2013 to 2022. Again, unfortunately, uh, you know, India is not uh, you know, in the list in the exporters. But if you look at the importers, India is in their list. Uh, no major uh, change, but uh, eighth position in India is. Uh, so, you know, 
again import is also not bad i should mention like i say you know little inflation is good import is also good uh, in fact uh, one of the parameter we look at you uh, know whether economy is growing is the whether import is growing but what kind of import is growing whether it is missionary etc which leads to further you know value add so in terms of imports india is at the eighth position uh, but it could you know while this is not bad we should find a place in the top exporters going forward now moving from international we'll go move to the you uh, know india trade if you look at india's merchandise trade like what has mentioned the international from about 2014 to almost you know uh, uh, 2020 the export was something like 300 billion dollars uh, in fact you know many times we'll see if you look at you know that's one of the reason here what we mentioned as aagr is very low because the first so many years it was stagnating after 2020 uh you no know, uh, which again our covid year 1920 was the financial year covid impacted in uh, no uh, december and real impact started actually only in india between february and march so that year there was no major change 21 the full impact of covid happened and uh, it really reduced from 313 to 291 but it's also international trend it's not just for india it reduced you know everywhere you know across the world uh, 313 to 291 billion dollars uh and then the major increase happened uh, in 22 from about say 291 uh, no trillion dollars uh, it it moved to sorry billion dollars to 422 billion dollars it was a major increase in terms of exports and the subsequent year it increased okay you no know, decently from 422 to 455 and uh, this year the given the trend uh, it it could be at the same level or slightly lower because i think export has been decelerating in the last uh, few months look at the imports import is significantly increasing the difference of you know export and import what we call as trade uh, trade balance india is always having a negative trade balance we look at that you know the orange uh, dots below the uh, you know graphs from 135 it has increased to 265 you know billion us dollars and this is one of the reason where government even is focusing on exports where see like as a country you no know, we, we we don't have crude Uh, we don't have gold uh, we don't have uh, the defense equipments for which india needs lot of foreign ex- you know foreign currency and uh, more and more we export we get foreign currency and it has its own advantages so we need to reduce this uh, trade deficit which is the you know minus 264.9 billion dollars uh, which i mentioned you know like uh, india's merchant trade deficit widely with a steady increase post uh, 2021 from uh, us dollar 102.6 billion to us dollar 264.9 billion driven primarily by substantial jump in the imports of mineral fuels and oils as well as pearls and precious stones in fact if you do uh, you know a back of the envelope calculation if you remove gold and crude uh, india's exports imports will be broadly same so the significant gap is because of the gold and uh, crude crude import has been reducing uh, uh, and because of focus on the clean energy but we need to significantly increase the exports if you look at the you know uh, products at the top both in terms of exports and imports again there is no major change uh, again uh, if you look at the export between 2013 to 23 the last 10 year comparison uh, petroleum pearls gold and jewelry drug formulas etc again uh, again no uh, uh, unfortunately leather does not fall in the high you know uh, 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 exported items so because it is this forum i you know calculated the data if you see the exports in 2013 was 4.8 billion dollars which moved to uh, no in 23 is almost the same 4.8 billion but because the basis increased the share has reduced uh, in 2013 it was 1.6% of total exports in 23 it is 1.1% of total export because the basis increased value has not uh, increased uh, the data may be slightly different from what data we use dgc and is but based on what data uh you know the numbers may slightly change in terms of imports again you know uh, it's not you know majorly changed from crude to gold to the same thing and the leather imports marginally you know the you know uh, as increased from points uh, 0.7 billion to 1 billion uh, but again if you look at the share it is reduced from 0.2 to 0.1 so the the share of leather in terms of both export and imports is not very significant where i think the industry can work together to you know increase its share but a very very important point in the export and imports if you see what is being imported what is being exported there is no major value add 
no, so there I think you know as India progresses, we need to increase the value add in terms of the products being manufactured and exported so that we get the major value. If you look at the top exporting countries, uh, again these also remains the same. Uh, but see the movement of you know uh, in terms of export destinations, US has become a very important partner. In fact, US is only I would say one of the only country where we have a trade surplus. In most of the other countries, you know, we have a trade deficit, but uh, here we have a trade surplus. In terms of imports, again China maintains its leadership position in the last 10 years. Russia has increased recently because of you know, we moving from Middle East to Russia for petrol uh, when you know, Russia was uh, made sanctions on. We started using you know, other means of mechanism to import. So Russia has increased its position in terms of you know, uh, as an import uh, source compared to FI13 to FI23, but more or less other countries remains the same. Now if you see how India's share is moving in terms of global merchandise uh, for the last say 15 years, in 2007 India was at the 26th position, uh, no, somewhere at 1.1, 1 .1. in 2012 it slightly moved up to from 1.1 .1 to 1.6 and uh, the next 5 years there is no major increase, uh, it has moved from 1.6 to 1.7. And again in the last 5 years it has moved from 1.7 to 1.8. So, but look at China. In 2007, China was about 8.8% in the second position. After which it has been maintaining its leadership position. Something like say 11%, 13% and 15%. So between, uh, see if you see 2022, China and US alone, almost about 25% of trade is these two countries. And in terms of economy, US alone accounts for 25% of global economy. Global economy is about 100 trillion dollars, US is about 25 trillion dollars. Same way between China and US, they account for about 25% of the share. Now looking at India's merchandise exports, now I have done an analysis to find out how much of exports of goods and services is to the GDP. Now we are talking about our GDP is something like say like 3.7 trillion US dollars. The international trade, which is both you know, exports of goods and services, about 21%. I think a very decent number, if, if it is very high, let like us say for example Vietnam or Malaysia, they may get into problem because they are too dependent on outside uh, economy. India is I think 21 is I think relatively fine. But the problem is within the export of goods and services, again this second on the, in the, on the bottom side, left hand side graph is fine in terms of manufacturing exports. Uh, among the merchandise export, manufacturing exports about 68%. I think this is also fine. The problem is the next one, where share of high tech exports. So if you look at out of the manufactured exports, only 10% uh, is high tech export. What do we mean by high tech? Where there is a lot of R&D. R&D is involved, where there will be a lot of value add. So within the exports, what is being manufactured and exported, value add products is extremely low. Compared to countries like say like you know I am talking about again say Vietnam, Philippines, other countries, South Korea, these are very high high tech exports. Now this gives you know the trend of exports you know uh, uh, in FI24 in terms of exports as well as FI24 major imports for the last uh, you know, uh, 8 to 9 months. In fact which I was mentioning that uh, given the trend it is expected to actually slow down this year, uh, government is making all its efforts, a lot of export scheme which has been introduced to increase exports. But if you look at you know, uh, April number 22 to April number 23, it has degrown by about 7% you know, uh, exports and imports has actually degrown by about 6%. You know, uh, again leather, if you look at again it was not in the major items but because of this forum I collected the data for leather. Leather has degrown in terms of export to about 13% and 10% uh, in terms of imports. In fact, I was just speaking to one of the you know, um, uh, speakers down. So I was, you know, when I was preparing this, I saw one you know, uh, CLE vision document for 2030, where it mentions you know, that uh, leather industry is expected to go to 47 billion. So it's first astonished saying that you know, from about 5 billion, how it is going to 47 billion, first they're comparing domestic and uh, you know, exports. Then in exports also they're talking about leather and non-leather put together, they're talking about something like anyway between 10, 10 billion to 13 billion. So now, while India has a trade deficit in uh, uh, no merchandise, 
India has a trade surplus in services, which is actually a positive sign. And as in, in fact, even in uh, GDP, uh, no service uh, constitutes about 50 percent of you know, economy. Services is a very significant share, and uh, it has been increasing very, very regularly. Like what we saw the trade deficit, which I'll just go back to show. This one, which the you know the orange line below the chart, from 135.8 negative to 264.9 negative. You see in trade in the services, it is from 79 positive, it has moved to 143 positive. So the country has a trade surplus, so no in terms sorry uh, surplus in the uh, services. Export has been increasing from 152 billion to 325 billion. Import has increased from 79 to 182. and the surplus as i mentioned has been increasing if you look at the various components in services uh, it is the major one as an individual item and uh, others being business services which is legal and others etc travel transportation etc it you know uh, will continue to lead the country now we talked about where india is currently which is the you know fifth largest economy likely to go to third largest economy in you know a uh, few years but government of india has announced what is called amrit kal the the golden period of you know 25 years from uh, no, uh, last two years back to 2047 when we'll complete 100 years of india's independence uh, currently we are fifth largest which i mentioned will become third largest economy uh, usually five trillion shortly and then 2047 when we complete 100 years we're talking about 30 trillion economy and i should mention with all attributes of a developed nation to give a idea when we talk about you know we'll be happy that you know not even in ppp but even in uh, nominal terms will be third largest economy but a developed nation is determined by the per capita income one of the major factor india's per capita income again very very approximately it is something like 2500 dollars per person uh, it's actually 2616 but we say 2500 from 2500 i'll move to say like okay in in 2047 So there will be three countries: uh, India, sorry, uh, China, US, and uh, India. India currently I'm talking about the per capita as of date. India is two six one six. China is about twelve thousand five hundred. So almost what uh, six times. Uh, US is something like seventy five thousand dollars per capita income. So see the huge difference in terms of per capita income. So while India develops. to increase its uh, no gdp india also should work as uh, work very closely to bridge the inequalities and the per capita income should increase in fact uh, india's per capita income is one of the lowest in the brics grouping which you call brics sorry brazil russia india china south africa we are the lowest even g20 india has the lowest per capita income while you know economy is growing per capita income is is almost stagnant so india should work for which leather industry can greatly contribute which i'll come you know in the subsequent uh, slides india is already demonstrating lot of positive things in fact in sports we are making a mark i think the first time we got 100 medals in uh, asian games uh, the space program has been a major success uh, india is becoming a major destination for healthcare i would say you uh, know uh, price uh, price uh, manageable healthcare then one of the major achievement is the jandhan account by by financial inclusion now especially through the upi uh, no uh, where the gpay etc everyone is having uh, no access to uh, finance climate goal india is making a very ambitious program uh, by 20 uh, no 70 will be net zero education has been uh, no uh, predominantly increasing we made a major breakthrough in terms of covid vaccine how we demo, no vaccinated our population uh, dpi which is again something like what we talked about uh, no this uh, uh, upa etc and india's global standing in terms of geopolitical so we have a long way to go in terms of you know the growth some of the export schemes i think this grouping may be aware uh, uh, what we call uh, rod apt uh, no refunds exporters are embedded duty tax that are you know, not, so far not being rebated or refunded so this uh, with effect from 22 i think other some products have been expanded definitely leather is also having a benefit so this is in lieu of earlier schemes of meis and acas which was not compatible internationally so government introduce this scheme and this scheme has been relatively you know useful for uh, exporters uh, epcg has been again has been there for a quite quite uh, some time uh, you know where you import certain goods and you don't pay duty as long you you know value add and export 
The next scheme is the uh, PLI scheme, where Government of India has introduced this scheme in March 20 uh, with an outlet for almost 2 lakh crores and uh, this is to give incentives for companies for incremental sales of products which are manufactured uh, in domestic units. The scheme invites foreign companies to come and set up uh, you know, manufacturing units to produce in India and you know, uh, if you remember now what is called instead of you know, made in India, uh, make in India. So that, that scheme is what the government is trying and uh, till about November 23 about 746 applications have been approved uh, under 14 key sectors. I think this again is a very interesting uh, you know, concept I think which has been uh, you know, in vogue in some countries and India has tried what is called you know, district as export hub, uh, what we call one district one program. So government has identified about 7, 6, 765 districts and for each district one product. So there I think we, we can you know, leather industry can find how, how many districts leather can be the you know, major product because once it is done it identifies products and services with export potential, address bottlenecks. Uh, of uh, exports of these products and services and support, supporting the local exporters manufacture to scale and find potential buyers overseas. So uh, now wherever you know, there is a potential I think leather should you know, make it strive. Uh, uh, again for this confusion centers are established for manufacturing and processing. Uh, the framework is the, there is a district export promotion committee uh, you know, which is created to provide support for export promotion and address the bottlenecks and there is a district export promotion plan which is coordinated by District Export Promotion Committee and there is an online monitoring action plans. This all ensures that the identified product achieves a large scale and makes a large impact in terms of the country's export trade. In terms of leather industry which you know which which I think this uh, group should be very uh, know, uh, impressed. Uh, as I think uh, know, uh, this gathering but no definitely India accounts for about 13 percent of the world's leather production of hides and skins. The next two points is very very critical where leather industry can add actually a lot of value to Indian economy. See more than 94% of production units in this sector is you know, MSMEs which is a focus of uh, government of India and actually this sector creates a lot of startups. Uh, no, there is no major you know, uh, capital required even with a low capital you can start and you can contribute uh, know, to the, uh, know, uh, the GDP. Leather industry is also an employment intensive sector providing jobs to about 4.4 million people. When I talked about you know, India becoming you know, uh, third largest economy and you know, even in the you know, nominal GDP, you know, uh, PPP etc. Uh, I mentioned that the per capita income is, will be still low uh, and you know, we need to work on the inequality. One of the way inequality can be improved is in terms of you know, increasing the job opportunities for people and leather sector is one. There are a few other sectors like uh, gems and jewellery, textiles. So leather has a major major contribution in terms of providing job opportunities. Uh, government of India is very keen. I think the uh, industry also should take advantage and you know, ensure that this is being used. And the major production centers I think this grouping does not need to be you know, educated. I think they are aware uh, in Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, UP, Maharashtra, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi you know, and Kerala. Now if you look at India's leather exports, again say from 19 to 23 it's almost only 5 billion dollars. It is not majorly increased. Uh, imports is also except uh, drop after the COVID period I think both export and import but more or less again at 1 billion. So 5 billion is export, import is only you know 1 billion dollar and uh, there is a trade uh, uh, no balance. Look at you know India's export to leather I think dividing into various categories, uh, salary harness, leather footwear, uh, you know, leather garments, finished leather, leather goods and leather footwear. To just kindle some thoughts, I just you know made this slide where when we go to the you know subsectors, say like for example again I will you know, focus only on the leather footwear. In leather footwear, if you see the previous slide, uh, leather footwear you know uh, sorry uh, yeah leather footwear constitutes the 2.4 and has the largest share in terms of leather. But if you look at these the centerpiece top exporters of leather footwear in 22, India is 2.4 and China is 29. Okay, while you know we feel that you know uh, this has a major out of uh, 5 billion, 2.4 is uh, uh, know, uh, leather uh, footwear, but here between India and China there is a huge uh, know, uh, gap. But we made an analysis within this 2.4 which has the major export destinations for footwear. So these kind of analysis can be further drilled down for each sectors I have done for saddlery harness. Again we see it is 0.2 whereas China is 1.4. In terms of leather apparel India is 0.7. 
so we have in terms of broad parity in terms of leather apparel uh, you know, compared to other countries but in terms of footwear I think there is a long way to go. So this again I will touch upon very broad things see there is there is a you know, uh, Indian footwear leather development program brought out by government in 2026 which covers sustainable technology, environmental protection, integrated development of leather scheme, establishment of institution facilities, design studios, brand promotion. I want to you know, spend some time on brand promotion, mega leather footwear and accessories cluster development. Again 100% FDA is allowed, uh, again which we talked about BS quality control implemented in 23 and 0% you know, duty. Again this is a new thing which you know, India enters into you know, regional trade agreements. Uh, so India has signed one uh, you know, RTA with what is called ECTA with Australia and which uh, you know for leather uh, you know for leather products there is a zero duty so we should focus on some identified countries identified regions where we take coming back to this i think now i'll just only leave one thought and may you know open it for question and answer see like you know when we do an analysis see india has an immense potential huge population in fact the uh, the domestic market is huge but look at the the brands in fact uh, you know uh, there are like in, in terms of say like auto components and IT, India has made a huge impact. But in terms of leather, maybe other than high design, I have not seen any brand from India becoming international brand. So even see like for example, there are so many ladies here. So many of them use you know, handbags from you know, uh, Coach, Michael Coase, etc. With a huge domestic, I, I don't think there is a huge uh, you know, brand for ladies handbag in India. So I think you know the, the you know while there is a lot of technical expertise, you no know, there is a lot of advantage in terms of you no know, hides and skins or whatever share etc. But in terms of designing, packaging, branding, I think you know there is a lot of potential I think which could be done. As I mentioned, I have not seen any major national brand for ladies handbag, which is very surprising for a population of this much thing. We still have you no know, uh, let it be Gucci or you no know, Michael Kors, Coach for shoes. Uh, maybe uh, you know, again you know, uh, for non-leather, uh, India is you know, becoming one preferred destination, I think a lot of you know, shoe companies are coming. But for you know, leather, I have not seen any brands being greatly developed here. Uh, so that I think is a huge potential. Uh, again, I think this gra you know, uh, gathering you know, has a lot of expertise, I cannot come and preach. But you know, I will leave some thoughts in terms of designing, packaging and branding, huge potential. Once you do, then the value increases. So I'll pause here and open up the you know session for question and answers. Thank you. May I request now our general secretary to hand over the memento to guess his Sir, if you figure them have any questions or no thoughts. Normally, sir. Uh, anyone uh, have any questions or thoughts on this topic or any idea or addition to it? You can please ask or if you can send your query to our email of ILTA, we can send it to the speaker. I want to say that you said right sir to make India the third largest economy the MSME will play, uh, will play the major role in that uh, sector so whatever the we student could do in the startup sector and uh, how you said that the no major brands in the footwear and uh, ladies purse or goods sector is there sir actually we export the raw leather or finished leather to the major brands like Louis Vuitton and Gucci like and they are adding the value and then after selling us we have the purchasing power to uh, purchase that high luxury brand sir but we are not making it we are lagging in that sector sir so we student uh, i think uh, we should do uh, add some value to the product and market it right and then uh, come with a very nice uh, exportable product which could be uh, have a good market in india and as well as abroad sir thank you yeah i think you know very valid observation in fact i recollect uh, i think everyone will know apple phone uh, so the cost of manufacturing Apple phone is very very low compared to you know what is the price at which it's being sold. The, 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 the pricing is for the designing concept and the branding. So I think India also should move uh, some of its products to that segment. 
and definitely then only we'll add value and then you know india making a mark uh, again i'm saying like high design is a very small brand but made international so there could be so many high designs you know from india to the international market send that uh, apple apple is also now manufacturing in india and uh, no major brands uh, like uh, Louis Vuitton also started manufacturing Pondicherry in 2007, and after four years, uh, it uh, uh, Louis Vuitton sell its manufacturing unit to a uh, Chennai-based unit, Chennai-based company. But now, why can't major brands could uh, in leather industry could make in India and add value to them, and uh, it also help uh, employable sector in India, sir? The government of India is making efforts, but I made a different point. One, definitely, international brands should come and manufacture in India, like Apple. But my thing is that Indians should develop international brands, not bringing international brands to India. Okay. Yeah, one thing I just have a question. Okay. Uh, Liga is a natural product, and they are always fighting with the thing. They are not fighting with somebody, but the uh, thing is trying to Liga is a product and they are trying to develop that together. I think get the share for the price structure and other. How the government taking care of saves this industry? So again, a different concept actually. You know, when when uh, I'll slightly digress. Whenever I go, there is a lot of rappers saying that the no, government should give these incentives. I will say actually we should stand on our own, right? So why should we depend on government to protect? See, the industry should change the mindset of people, saying that they should make people to look for leather shoes. Rather than saying that government should say that they, you use leather shoes compared to non-leather shoes, so you should, as an industry, in fact, sometime back there was a lot of you know this uh, against leather, the PETA and all. It has I think slowed down, you know. So likewise, industry as a whole should create awareness. Like say, for example, uh, I'm just giving an analogy. Like Intel, Intel is a chip, right? So no one buys Intel, uh, no the sorry uh, that Intel chip, but we buy uh, no computers which that chip. So likewise, we should create an awareness saying that create a brand for Indian leather products. So while government of India can do something, but I think it's for the industry to do make a shift in terms of the mindset of the people. I am Tarok Shah. I want to I, I want to put some question to you because uh, in the world the uh, synthetic products are growing by leaps and bounds. Leaving behind the uh, 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 natural products like uh, leather, leaving behind, and actually uh, we are uh, uh, in the top competition against the uh, uh, yeah, uh, pl synthetic products. So what, where we are, and how can we de develop the leather uh, uh, products development against the uh, 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 synthetic products? Number one. Number two. Uh, if someone, uh, somebody uh, wants to do business in a very small uh, uh, projects in the leather sectors, how does the MSME can help uh, by giving, by providing them with uh, finance and other infrastructure? Can you put some highlight on, on this matters? Yeah. Uh, so the first question in terms of you know, how do we compete with uh, non-leather? Non-leather. How the answer lies in how you position leather products. Say for example, in a, in a corporate world, right, leathers are, leather shoes are only allowed for uh, no, a formal dressing, right? So the non-leather is more in terms of casual wear, okay, and you know, for, you know, for the, you know, I think young generation, whatever. So how do you want to position your product is what I think it matters. I think industry as a whole should know uh, and keep it a price. Okay, like again, I'm saying like, see, we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, Louis Vuitton or whatever, you know, the uh, high value brands. Still, they have a market share because they position it very, you know, right, rightly. So, industry should position leather, leather products, saying being natural, you know, uh, or, you know in terms of, you know, the, the formal dressing, etc. Then create an awareness, create a market, that is one. In terms of MSMEs, okay, assuming if there's a startup, Government of India has introduced a lot of schemes for financing. So, in terms of, you know, like, uh, there is something called, you know, uh, I, I forget the name, where up to 1 crore there is no collateral required, government gives some you know, scheme extra. There is a lot of scheme introduced by government of India. I think it will be available in MSME ministry. If you are not able to locate, I will be happy to direct. So funding is available for you know, MSMEs uh, without any collateral up to a certain amount, after which there is a you know, uh, security. Now actually this is uh, uh, on the black and white. 
but if i if somebody wants to do the uh, want to do the venture into this uh, area how does he can go and where uh, he will go for uh, getting loans and some other infrastructure projects is there any uh, some uh, consultancy or the government level can uh, how can a msme uh, actually passing out from a uh, college a man, a boy cannot find any uh, things where he will go uh, to find out the loan or uh, infrastructure product because uh, the uh, uh, the prospect of the employment in this sector is becoming very constricted it is a very constrict and people have to do something on their own uh, uh, that is why where they can go and uh, to get the msme loans and others uh, of, uh, things so as i mentioned they can approach any bank under a particular scheme i forgot the name up to 1 crore the government gives the security cover so there is no collateral required by the msme you know uh, uh, exporter to give to the bank so they can get that second uh, because i am from exim uh, so in the country there are five dfis uh, one each for each economic activity exim bank is one for uh, exports there is one for msme set up a government account called sibi it's called Small Industry Development Bank of India. It's exclusively for small industries. Then for one for housing, one for agriculture, one for uh, infra, where I'm currently deputed. Uh, so I'm, I'm from Exim, deputed to NAPFIT. So there is an institution set up for small industries, which will be happy to help. And will be available in MSME Ministry website. So if you need a specific question, I'll be happy to collect it and guide you. Better, better you send the questions to ILT. I'll send it to the honorable speaker. He will give you the full guidance how to go about it. Okay. Thank you. also started as small only how some companies are able to get finance how other companies are not able to get finance you can just analyze yourself yeah. okay now small companies the problem with the see, what is a bank bank is a question of public money right you have some savings you put your money in your bank you want to ensure that your principal is safe right when when you want to put your uh, money in say, a saving deposit you want to go to a POC bank because that will be safe you will not go to a small finance bank you will go to a PUC bank because money is safe. Customers are public money. So they need to ensure that the money what they lend comes back, number one. The problem with not all MSMEs, uh, some MSMEs is that the information is not structured properly. So they will take more time to do the due diligence on that company. 
So even all big companies, starting from Reliance or you know, Ambani, whatever you were saying, started with a small company, but they had a vision, they put right a system in place so that when information is required, how do you give? Right? So if, if what the, the lenders want is only information to do the due diligence. So if the information is structured properly, the governance is fine, I think they'll be more than happy to give because they're ultimately, they cannot keep the money, they have to lend to get interest to you know, get the dividends. No, I think we'll discuss in the break. Thank you very much, all the audience and our honorable speaker for replying to the relevant questions. Now, let me uh, give the opportunity to honor our honorable speaker with a memento. Honorable Speaker, Mr. Shiva Kumar, other dignitaries from leather industries, students, faculties of academic institutes, our beloved members, the award winners, the guests present today, good evening to all of you. To start with, we express our hearty thanks to Honorable Speaker, Mr. Shiva Kumar for delivering Sandeshal Memorial Lecture, which is very much contemporary with the role of India in international trade. And I am sure everyone enjoyed the lecture. If you have any other queries or questions, please send to ILTA. We will forward it to the speaker and he will reply. ILTA will remain grateful to you, sir. Whoever has missed this lecture, you can see this in our Facebook Live, YouTube page, and our website. We would like to congratulate all the award winners for their outstanding performances. Our association wishes a bright future for all of you. Since 1950, for the last 74 years, we are doing all these activities for the industry and the students, scholars, institutes. And throughout the world, we give our service. And we are definite that every corner of the world we reached and everybody has used our services, information, journal, books, which we published every year, every, every month. And in this process, we involved all the associations, NGOs, government departments, academic institutes in different point of time. And we got always help and assistance from them, thanks to all of these institutes and associations. On this momentous occasion, we must remind those dedicated members who are the pillar of this successful journey of 74 years of our association. Our sincere thanks to Mrs. Shen and her family for attending this event like every year to pay homage to our past president. Thanks to Mr. Chandan Basu for sponsoring the awards and the scholarship for the needy students. Thanks to our members, students, guests for their presence today. Thank you very much. We now invite everyone to have a snacks and tea outside the hall, please. Thank you very much. Thank you.